Let me slip behind you here. Daryl, who is the gentleman behind us? Rusty. Rusty, thank you very much. Let me uh, shake a hand and, and I'll, I'll let you slip away because otherwise it'll look like we're ignoring you and I don't mean to. It's always embarrassing. The drummer always gets the short end of the I stick, know. usually buried in the back. Do you remember that day you were here a thousand years ago? I sure do. I remember I had on a, a dress, I, a, a skirt I bought at Learners with the little flowers on it and a little p dusty rose pink blouse and my little haircut. You guys have paid many dues. Your dad is a musician. Your dad is a musician. Did your parents influence you in the line of work you took? Definitely, yeah. Started Did they encourage you? Yeah, all the way. My father had my uh, piano lessons paid for when I was five, you know. <laughs> He got you started in the right direction. Did they, now, your father was a vocalist with what we would call in our day the big band era. Right. Did he, did he uh, like what you did the first time he heard it? Oh, he, yeah. He's always been my biggest fan. Uh, the very first time, uh, he, well, I was singing since I was a little kid. And he always encouraged me, and he would bring home records for me to listen to. Uh, of course, they were his type of music, mm -hmm. which became my type. Uh, he brought home Sarah Vaughan, people like that. Now, and that brings me to the next point, because when I first met you, you had one kind of music, and people sort of put you in a box and categorized you. Mm -hmm. uh, you even had different looks. You had the hat on. You had a different, pardon me, different color hair. Uh, <laughs> all of that changed. Now, yeah. why? What was the purpose behind the change? We really should bring up, we looked more like this when we started. What you happened? mean other people caused that change? Well, when we, we, were, we were called the Dragons originally in the club days, in the old days. And uh, we used to, I looked like this. Tony had blonde hair more. In those days. And you remember it then. I mean, it, the women have a habit of uh, changing uh, by hair. I was a blonde when I met Daryl. I'd been a blonde all my life. And then when he and I went on natural foods, I thought I'd let my hair grow natural, which I did. And then I got bored with it and I became a blonde again. You can do no wrong I'm in my book. I'm a blonde in my heart. What can I now, say? What, what is the difference musically now? Because this album is a smash. That record's top 10. Has there been a change of philosophy? I'll drop it in the middle. Who's going to answer? I will answer. It's uh, the music is. Uh, <laughs> we, we knew that, didn't we? Yes. We've known each other long enough to know you would have answered. The music is a little more sensual this time. We, in fact, we worked for that on this uh, on this album, the Make Your Move album. We uh, we talked about things that we'd never talked before about on records. Before. Let, let me point out something it's because I know you. You are sophisticated, intelligent, bright people. You had a very innocent, naive public image, which wasn't to say that you're not nice people, but this is more grown up, this stuff. We are grown up, and it's time to be grown up. It, it's a little difficult trying to pretend like you're innocent when you're, you're 30 years old. <laughs> you mean, you're, you're, not, you're, in you're not innocent anymore. Do you need the microphone, or shall I take no, that you from you? take that. All right, you, you scoot in over there. The name of the song, sir, if you will, please. Uh, what are we doing, Tony? <laughs> what is it, Tony? Love on a shoestring. You remember that one, Daryl? Ladies and gentlemen, Captain Ensenil.